On Friday the 13th of July 1958, two camp counselors at the Camp Crystal Lake Summer Camp in Cunningham County, New Jersey, were found by camp staff brutally butchered with a hunting knife by an unknown assailant. 19-year-old Bartholomew Barry Jackson was found in a barn on the campgrounds with a fatal stab wound to his stomach. His girlfriend and fellow camp counselor, Claudette Hayes, also 19, was found just a few feet away with her throat slashed. The murders went unsolved until almost 20 years later, when the perpetrator, a local woman and former staff member at Camp Crystal Lake named Pamela Voorhees, went on another vicious murder spree which left seven dead in what became known as the Crystal Lake Massacre. Shocking mass murders at Crystal Lake, tonight on ION News. I just can't believe it. We are never going to feel safe in Crystal Lake again. I think it's pretty easy. It was it was drugs, I tell you. It's a <laughs> shame. Kids and drugs. I bet my last dollar on it. More bodies have been found literally strewn across the five square mile campground, leaving officials and residents stunned in the wake of what will forever be known as the Crystal Lake Massacre. Camp Crystal Lake was first established in 1935 by local entrepreneur David Christie and his family. They employed local teenagers and young adults as counselors and staff, and the camp had a good reputation for its first 21 years of operation until 1957. In that year, the Christies hired local resident Pamela Voorhees as their new cook, and allowed her son Jason to accompany her to work. Jason was born in Crystal Lake on June 13, 1946, to Elias and Pamela Voorhees. Unfortunately, Jason was born with hydrocephalus, a brain condition that caused swelling of his head. He also had severe facial deformities and mental disabilities. After his father Elias left the family in his early childhood, Pamela was forced to raise Jason on her own. To shelter him from the cruelty of the outside world, she kept her son isolated from the community not letting him attend school and educating him in their home on the outskirts of Crystal Lake. Due to his mental deficiencies, his education was quite limited, but he learned never to question his mother, understanding without her guidance he would struggle to function. Unfortunately, soon after Pamela Voorhees started working at Camp Crystal Lake, tragedy would strike her son. On Friday, September 13, 1957, Jason was bullied and teased by the campers and he attempted to escape by running down to the pier where he fell into Crystal Lake and drowned. The camp counsellors were supposed to be on the lookout for this type of misbehaviour, but the two on-duty counsellors that day were negligent in their duties and failed to intervene. After an extensive search of the lake, Jason's body was never found and to avoid further scandal, the Christie family shut down the camp for the remainder of the season. An interrogation of the counsellors led the authorities to conclude Jason's death was accidental and no one was charged. Pamela was distraught with grief and broke down after her son's death, resulting in her being institutionalised for six months. In 1958, the camp was reopened on its usual summer schedule. However, Pamela Voorhees, who was still consumed with grief over the loss of her son, snuck into the camp shortly after the opening and murdered Barry Jackson and Claudette Hayes the counsellors she blamed for Jason's drowning. She was never suspected of the murders, and due to the incident, the camp was once again closed. There were multiple attempts to reopen Camp Crystal Lake throughout the 1960s. However, none of these attempts were successful. A series of fires in 1959 prevented the summer debut, as did the discovery of poisoned water in 1962. Although no one knew who the culprit was at the time, after it came to light that Pamela Voorhees was responsible for the murders, it was also concluded she was sabotaging the reopening to make certain the camp remained abandoned, and that no other child would share Jason's fate. This fueled local gossip that the camp was jinxed or on cursed ground, and the local residents nicknamed it Camp Blood. In 1979, Steve Christie, the son of the original owner David Christie, made another attempt to reopen Camp Crystal Lake. He hired seven young people to act as counsellors and help repair and restore the camp to get it ready for the reopening. This time, no longer content with sabotage, Pamela Voorhees went on a bloody rampage that left all but one of the counsellors dead and cost her her own life. Her first victim was Annie Phillips, who was hired by Steve Christie to be the camp cook. 
According to her family, she was greatly excited about her opportunity to spend the summer doing what she loved, and hitchhiked away to Crystal Lake with high expectations. Arriving on Friday the 13th of June, 1979, sometime before 7am in the morning. Witnesses reported a local truck driver employed by Alston Oil Supply named Enos Smith offered to drive her to the crossroads leading to the camp and was the last person to see her alive. Annie's body was found the next morning in Pamela Voorhees' Jeep with a slash wound to her throat. She was just 19 years old at the time of her death. Police investigators putting together the timeline of events speculated she was picked up by Pamela Voorhees after she got out of Smith's truck, who then murdered her and put her body in the Jeep. Detectives determined that the next victim was Ned Rubenstein, who was hired by Steve Christie to help repair and reopen Camp Crystal Lake. His body was found in his bunk in one of the Camp Crystal Lake cabins with a single slash wound to the neck. Police put his time of death as approximately 5 p.m. The body of another counselor who had also been hired to help with the repairs was found in the same cabin. 20-year-old Jack Burrell was found in the bunk bed below Ned with an arrow forced through his neck, and his girlfriend, 19-year-old Marcy Stanler, was found dead in a shower stall of the nearby shower block with a single axe wound to the face. Brenda Jones, a counselor who had been put in charge of fixing up the archery range, was the next victim. She had been stabbed to death with an arrow and her body had been bound with rope and then pushed through a window of the main cabin, Comanche Lodge. The next killed was Steve Christie, who was found hung upside down from a tree with a single stab wound to his chest. William Bill Brown was the last victim of the rampage and was found by police pinned against a door with four arrows still stuck in his body. His throat had been slashed with a hunting knife. The only survivor of the massacre was 19-year-old Alice Hardy. Hailing from California and studying to be an artist with a minor in psychology, she was pulled from the lake by police who found her unconscious the morning after the massacre and had to rush her to hospital. She later recounted a harrowing tale of being pursued across the campgrounds by Pamela Voorhees to the edge of the lake, where the two fought and Alice decapitated Pamela with a machete while defending herself from the crazed mother, ending the rampage. In a bizarre twist to her story, in her statement to the police, she also described seeing a young boy in the lake who pulled her into the water, whom she believed to be Pamela's son, Jason. Two months later, Alice disappeared in suspicious circumstances from her home and has been missing ever since. The case was never solved and this further fueled speculation among local residents that Camp Crystal Lake was cursed and that Jason was still alive and had taken revenge against the woman that killed his mother. Even more fuel was added to this urban myth when several more murder sprees occurred at Crystal Lake over the following years. Some locals who believe Jason survived the drowning back in 1957 also believe he was responsible for all these murders. According to the myth, Jason wears a hockey goalie mask similar to this one when carrying out the murders to cover his deformed appearance, and the police have been covering up the evidence of his existence. There is even a group calling themselves the Crystal Lake Cover-Up Society that run a website dedicated to proving the theory true. Their most preposterous theory is that the government was able to capture Jason in 2008 and in 2010 cryogenically froze him to conduct research on him in the future. Most don't give these far-fetched conspiracy theories any credence and believe the murders are all copycat killings, which was partially proven to be true in 1989 when local paramedic Roy Burns went on a copycat killing spree at Pinehurst Youth Development Centre in Crystal Lake while wearing a hockey goalie mask. There were also reports of several Jason-style copycat murders in New York. Local author Clifford Blair wrote a book on the subject debunking the myth titled The Crystal Lake Conspiracy, Debunking the Lies and Legends of Jason Voorhees, which I highly recommend checking out. You can also learn more in the 2009 documentary the Crystal Lake Massacres Revisited. This excellent documentary explores the murders at Crystal Lake with interviews from local townsfolk, skeptics, and historians. Whatever theory you believe, there's no denying Crystal Lake has seen its fair share of bloodshed and murder. And if Jason is somewhere out there in the woods, the locals believe he will kill again.